Hey there, hungry history buffs. Are you curious about what secrets I've unearthed today? Yep, it's a doozy. Not your typical cooking show fare, I'll tell ya. I bet you're thinking, just a uniform, right? Oh, but it's not the uniform. It's what's behind it that's chilling. Did they really choose to be there? By choice, I mean, as much as a fish has in a net. These are the Hitler Youth, and today, we're going to talk about the story of indoctrination, manipulation, and their lost childhood. From forced marches to classroom brainwashing, the untold secrets of the Hitler Youth are darker than a moonless night. But believe me, we're going to light it all up. So strap in, folks. I'm Gus, and today on Saucy History, we're digging deep into the eerie echoes of the past, unraveling the hidden truths of the Hitler Youth. Picture this, Munich, 1922. The Nazi party whipped up their first youth group, the Jugendbund der NSDAP. Sounds like an unhealthy food ingredient, doesn't it? Kinda like MSG. Just like a little too much salt in a stew. Hitler's entry into this mix turned everything a bit sour. In post-World War I Germany, youth groups were all the rage. But the Nazis had their own special ingredient, a blend of ideology and propaganda. After a secretive phase, these groups emerged as the Hitler Youth, getting a rebrand in 1926 and becoming an official Nazi Party youth organization. Time flies, and by 1933, when the Nazis seized power, the Hitler Youth's membership skyrocketed to 2.3 million. What started as an optional activity now became the only choice on the menu for non-Jewish German youth. Other youth groups? Outlawed in 1936, leaving the Hitler Youth as the sole special on the day's card. Because what better way to ensure the future of your ideology than basically indoctrinating the youth, right? So how did the Hitler Youth cook up a storm of indoctrination? Well, it started in the classrooms and moved to the extracurriculars. Think of it like marinating young minds in Nazi ideology with the heavy seasoning of Hitler's teachings. From the get-go, these kids, as young as 10, were whisked away into the activities that were less about play and more about pledging allegiance to the little guy with the funny mustache. It was like a recipe designed to bake in obedience and sacrifice for the Führer and the Vaterland. By 1937, we're talking about a whopping 5.4 million members before it even became mandatory. Everything from weapons training to survival skills were on the menu. And let's not forget the hefty side of propaganda that came with it, encouraging an almost religious devotion to the Führer. Even their toys weren't spared in this propaganda feast. They were cleverly used to instill militarism in young minds. It was about grooming a generation willing to fight and die for Nazi ideals. And as the war pressed on, the objective became clearer, to create soldiers for the German army. Boys as young as 17 were pulled into military service, the kitchen of youth had turned into a boot camp for the Reich. After the war, many of these indoctrinated youth struggled to shed the layers of Nazi ideals. So what were these Hitler youths doing besides worshipping the small guy with a funny mustache? Initially, the Hitler youth activities were similar to the Boy Scouts. We're talking about camping, singing, hiking, the works. But as Nazi ideology thickened in the pot, these activities took on a new flavor. Imagine this. Instead of your regular scout badges, these kids earned stripes in racial ideology, unquestioning obedience, and a fierce loyalty to the almighty mustache man. Their activities were marinated in propaganda, making them the perfect recipe for future soldiers. Soldiers that would no doubt push forward, without mercy, Hitler's ideals. As the 1930s boiled on, the Hitler youth evolved into a paramilitary outfit, Boys as young as 10 were prepped for armed service. The once innocent outdoor escapades turned into rigid training sessions, from weapons handling to survival strategies. While the boys were groomed for military prowess, the League of German Girls focused on activities like rhythmic gymnastics and community service, all geared towards nurturing their role as the future bearers of the Aryan race. That's hella disturbing if you ask me. By 1939, membership in the Hitler Youth wasn't just encouraged, it was compulsory. 
The youth were now a crucial ingredient in the Nazi regime's dish of control and expansion. More than just shaping physical abilities, the organization deeply infused Nazi ideologies into the minds of young Germans. The final chapter of the Hitler Youth began as the tides of World War II turned against Nazi Germany. By 1943, the situation was desperate for the Nazis. Boys as young as 17, who were once part of the Hitler Youth, were now being drafted into the military service. As the war neared its end in 1945, even younger members were pulled from schools and thrown onto the front lines. Inexperienced and scared, these children were essentially cannon fodder. With the surrender of Nazi Germany in 1945, the Hitler Youth met its inevitable end. The Allied Control Council officially outlawed the organization on October 10, 1945, along with other Nazi party groups. Under German law, it was deemed an unconstitutional organization. This badge, once a symbol of pride for millions of German youth, became a relic of a chilling past. The Hitler Youth had not only transformed children into soldiers, but also tried to embed a poisonous ideology onto an entire generation. The disbandment of the Hitler Youth marked not just the end of an organization, but the close of a dark chapter in human history, where children were used to fuel the machinery of war and hate.